Welcome, this is your five minute geography lesson. We're covering theme two, element 10, global cities. Any questions? I'm Mr. S and I'll be your five minute teacher. Global cities and mega cities are two different things. Global cities are the most influential places in the world in terms of economic and cultural impacts. Places such as London, New York and Paris are not always the largest cities in the world, but they definitely play an important role in linking other countries together. The map I'm showing you now is the distribution of global cities across the world. And what you notice is Europe has the most clustered area of global cities as the largest distribution of them. And the reason for that is they're some of the oldest modern cities in the world. So places like London, Paris, they have been linking internationally for hundreds and hundreds of years. So they've got a strong link that goes way, way back. And this is from the colonial period. Most of Europe was engaging in colonial activity. So in essence, they had an empire. They went across the world sailing, looking for new land resources and claiming this land as their own and building colonies, settlements in these locations. And that was an international link that helped over time create them into global cities. So for example, the UK had colonies in the east coast of America, USA. They had numerous different colonies around Africa, and you can South Africa being one of them, India and Australia. And you can see that this has supported, even though all of these countries are now gaining their independence, they retain international links which makes Europe a large center for global cities. You'll also notice that most of this pattern, the largest concentration of global cities are in HICs, high income countries. And the anomalies where you don't find as many tend to be in LICs, so Africa for example. But this also has to do with the fact that Africa was, I suppose, badly treated. It had inequalities due to the fact that it was being exploited for its resources and population during that colonial period. It's put it on a back foot compared to some of the other countries, including the ones that were leading the colonial expansion. So global cities are the most important cities in the world in terms of economic and cultural impact and how they spread that around the world. I suppose one good way of showing that is the fact that Although UK is a very small island, there are a large proportion of people that speak English around the world. And that is because of our global impact from global cities. They play an important role in economic links with other countries. Now, if we look at in contrast, because a lot of people do confuse the two, global cities and mega cities. Mega cities are really simple. They're just any city in the world that has more than 10 million people. Some mega cities will be global cities, but not all mega cities are. So let's have a look at how global cities are connected. We have finance and trade. New York and London are the two biggest, most significant global cities in the world. And that is because they are the financial centers of nearly all trade that goes wrong internationally. So you've got the FTSE, Stock Exchange in London, and you also have Wall Street in New York. And nearly everything will pass through those two stock exchanges, which makes them a hub for all financial trade. So global cities and financial centers, uh, and you might also have banking HQs, so national banks, so like Lloyds, will have their headquarters down in London. It tends to be a capital city. HSBC has its headquarters in uh, Hong Kong. And their head offices will be making decisions around banking that will affect the entire global trade. There's migration and culture. So people come to popular cities to find work and because, and because they've heard good things about it. This brings a cultural diversity. So it could be languages, food, religions, traditions, and it becomes a melting pot that are all linked back to their home countries. There's governance and decision making. Global cities may play important roles in deciding how things act, maybe financially from the trade, but also it could be in terms of how businesses run, 
So it could be these big MNCs making uh, decisions like Apple deciding where it's going to put its production. It could also be from extra national organizations. The UN operates around the world and its headquarters is in New York. Ideas and information. Global cities are home to many of the world's TV and film industries. Think of Hollywood in California. Think of the BBC in London and in Manchester. These are all creating culture that's exported around the world. But you can also be things like football. Even Newcastle could be a global city because it has an internationally recognised football team. And then we have transport hubs. So global cities are home to some of the world's largest international airports. It could be um, shipping ports as well. And that movement of people, goods and tourists across the globe comes through these hubs, these transport hubs. And again, Newcastle could be seen as a global hub because we have an international airport and we have a ferry port as well. Well, that brings the lesson to an end. We'll continue at your own pace by completing the Now Try It task for homework. Class dismissed.